Today we're talking about frogs, because frogs deserve way more than we're giving them. There are a lot of frogs. Small frogs, big frogs, bumpy frogs, smooth frogs, abomination frogs. They thrive in extreme weather conditions. They have night vision. They can jump 20 times the length of their body. I don't even think the Terminator could do all that. They're also formidable. They've been on this earth for 200 million years. Whatever killed the dinosaurs didn't do shit to these little guys. And above all, they're goofy, they're silly, and sometimes they make cool noises such as this. You look up cool noise in a dictionary and you're gonna hear that sound. But despite everything I've just said, for some reason, these little guys get a bad rap. Now, if I put myself in the mindset of a stupid, ugly, ignorant person, I could maybe possibly see why you would not in inherently like these guys. They're warty, slimy, quick-moving lumps of gray and green that can be off-putting to the normies who don't know what's good for them. But today, I'm here to defend these little blobs of joy and greatness. Let me just explain in this video why frogs are actually really dope. And if you don't think it at the end of this video, that then uh, there's no consequences, but you'll be a stubborn asshole and no one wants to be that. Buckle up everybody, y'all about to get green pill. What? I know you hate it. I know you hate when I make videos. So because people are shallow, I thought I would start the video explaining why frogs are actually very cute and not ugly, like some of you dummies might actually believe. Because in reality, they're actually very cute, almost adorable, I would say. And that's not an opinion, that's a certified tug fact, which is worth more than a regular fact, trust me, I'm tug. And yes, some frogs are cuter than others, but you know, even the ugly ones are cute in like a pug way. Like objectively, pugs are hideous creatures, but there's something about them being so pathetic and unhealthy makes you want to love them a little bit more. And I don't know why we don't extend the same olive branch to frogs. So that being said, I've compiled the cutest types of frogs into one condensed list so I can hit you with a concentrated dose of frog love so that you can go on throughout your life actually loving frogs because if you don't love frogs right now every moment of your life is wasted you're wasting your life first up we have the African rain frog oh yeah oh I'm bringing heat out the gate boy how many animals do you know that their shape could be described as egg egg shaped I mean, I think that deserves a little applause. Some have also said it looks like a testicle, but I'm not going there. I, would, I prefer the term egg, thank you. You look this little man in the face and you tell me he isn't God's most pathetic creature. He deserves the world, but more specifically, your love. Actually, due to their size, these little fellas can't jump or swim, which are the two things frogs do. So they don't do anything. They're just, they're sad little lumps. Still not convinced? Look how small this one is. Look, look at this one. It's just a face and arm. The only reason why this guy looks like he's perpetually frowning is because you made him upset. Because what you've been saying, you know, and that the words hurt and they travel far. So maybe change your way. Number two, we have the red-eyed tree frog. First of all, absolute classic, an absolute icon of the frog community. There wasn't one American middle school biology textbook that didn't have this handsome fucker on the cover. And handsome he is. Look at the colors on this little guy. It is the definition of power clashing. Fun fact, the red-eyed tree frog uses a technique called startle coloration. They startle their enemies by using their bright, beautiful red eyes. Kind of like I used to cry so hard that my eyes would turn red so my bullies would leave me alone. And that didn't work, but it works for these little guys. You show me a cat or dog that color scheme could be described as an island nation sunset or, or a mid-90s arcade carpet. You can't, because these things are fucking fantastic. If you, don't, if you don't agree, you're a stupid, stupid moron. Number three, we have the tomato frog. I mean, are you fucking kidding me? Look at him. I mean, he looks like an actual tomato, a tiny little tomate. You know, I just want to put them on a BLT and make them cozy in a bread bag. These guys spend most of their time in mud and like a real tomato. Real tomatoes spend time in mud. I don't know, do tomatoes grow underground? I'm very overwhelmed right now. I feel like they hide in the mud because you guys are being mean to them, if I'm being honest. I feel like they, they would love to show their plump little bodies, but instead they have to hide because you guys think they're gross. They're not gross. And yeah, they secrete some pretty serious toxins, but who are you to fucking judge? You know, I'm sure if you rolled around in the mud all day and got all red and puffy, then you, you'd smell like crap and probably leak some gross stuff out of your body. You know, leave him alone. And then we have the Amazon milk frog. I mean, God. God, he's so polite. They all look like they're waiting for you to finish a story, but they're not just waiting so they can talk. They're actually actively listening. They want to hear the rest of your story, and I think that's beautiful. They spend their entire lives in trees. Their pads are specifically designed to climb trees, and that makes me happy. You know, they're getting away from the hustle and bustle, getting away from the rat race. They just want to be a happy little frog on a leaf, maybe sharing it with a homie. That's, oh my God, that image. Also, fun fact, in captivity, uh, female frogs have been known to eat the males for some reason. Um, I didn't have a really reason to bring that fact up, but I didn't want to not say it. Maybe they're a feminist icon. I mean, good God. And finally, we have the Australian green tree frog, and it's doing the head tilt like a goddamn puppy. If you don't immediately fuck with this little guy, you're a monster. They're just fat, perfectly green frogs that are just so chill and lovely, dude. The main fact I want to talk about these guys is their main form of defense is the fact that they scream. Like, if you pick them up, they'll just go, ah! and it makes animals drop them. They startle animals into letting them go. They're like, oh my God, dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you'd be this upset. And he's like, I know, I get it, it's fine. It's just, you know, it's been a lot today. 
Is that not amazing? I mean, how cute do these things have to be before you turn the leaf on them? Do they have to do a little dance for you? Do they have to smell like a sweet summer's day before you even give them a, a fighting chance? <sighs> Speaking of which, do you feel like a stinky little guy? Do you think you, you smell a little stinky? Or maybe even, even if you don't smell stinky, do you, do you wish you just smelled a little bit better or even a lot of bit better? Great segue, Tucker. I don't know how to start ads even at this point. We're talking about Scentbird today. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that lets you try a new designer scent every month for just $17. You don't have to invest a lot of money to get designer fragrances if you're rocking with Scentbird, let me tell you. Why would you spend $200 on a bottle of cologne with a face on it just so you can go into debt and maybe not smell as good as you were hoping for because you just what you went all in too fast. Why would you do that? Not with Semper though. Semper offers affordable and flexible subscription plans. You can also skip or cancel your subscription at any time. It is by definition hassle free. Every month you get to pick what scents you want sent to you. It's not like one of those loot box companies that sends you a bunch of random garbage and those all died out and for good reason but not Semper because Semper stays around because they know what they're doing. They have over 600 perfumes and colognes and also several unisex options. That's more options than you have with one of those fancy coke machines that lets you make a peach Mr. Piv which is an abomination. Semper carries such luxury brands as Gucci. Gucci, Prada, and Versace, as well as indie brands such as Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of Rebel. It's all so choice. It's all so great. This month, I was sent Fleur Missing Person, Dolce Gabbana, the one for men, and also Commodities Moss Plus. This one smells like a fancy man eating dinner with his family while the waitress openly flirts with him. This one smells like a sun-baked leather chair sitting next to a Christmas tree. Can you imagine that? Just put that in your head. And this one smells like a strong church handshake. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm going to be wearing this more often. With each fragrance, you get a 30-day supply so you can try out the fragrance before committing to a full bottle. Use my coupon code BIGTUG55 for 55% off at checkout at Scentbird.com. It's just a little over $7 for your first order and you're gonna be smelling nice and that's a crazy price and that rhymes. Scentbird, because who wants to be smelly when you can be not smelly? That's another free slogan. You guys are hurting my feelings, Scentbird. I keep giving you slogans and you're not using them. All right, now that I have obviously convinced you that frogs are nothing less than little princes and princesses and other non-gender conforming uh, royalty, Let's move on. I can now move on to step two, which is convincing you that frogs are actually really good pets. I had a lot of frogs growing up when I was a child, either hand caught or from Petco. So I can tell you it's a good move from firsthand experience. Now are you gonna get the same love and affection from a frog that you would a dog or a cat? Probably not, I'll be honest. But frogs can make excellent companions if you just give them a chance. I'm gonna give you several reasons for why frogs might fit perfectly into your life. And by the end of this segment, you're gonna be thinking, wow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a frog. Am I gonna be a frog guy? And then you're gonna have like 50 frogs in your house. And you're gonna be like, I'm the frog guy now. People we're gonna call you the frog guy and you're just gonna run with it because they don't they're jealous of what you have with all these frogs number one frogs take up less space they're little fellows with a lot to give the love to the size ratio is off the chart even fully grown the average frog size is between three and four inches and a lot of them are a lot smaller than that you could fill a drawer with 50 to 60 frogs and you wouldn't even notice i would not suggest doing that that's cruel but it would be efficient so just don't do that, but just Im imagine that. And all you need to do is just get one of them animal tanks and like a couple branches for them to hide under and they're good, they're happy with that. And it adds a middle school field trip vibe to whatever room you put it in, like you're on, a, on an aquarium trip and that's just lovely. Everyone lo loves feeling like that. Cats need a tower and a place to piss inside. Dogs, you know, sleep on the bed sometimes and that's annoying. But frogs, frogs know they're not paying rent, dude. They're, gonna, they're just there for the ride and you gotta appreciate that. Number two, frogs don't need constant attention like some homebound creatures I can think of. Isn't that right? Right, Abby. Frogs are incredibly low maintenance. In fact, they shouldn't really be handled at all very often. Your hands can accidentally strip a layer of mucus that they use to protect their bodies from pathogens. Now, I know what I just said was not the hottest sentence, but I mean, the frogs are by definition hands off. You don't gotta worry about them that much. Unlike cats and dogs that will bark and scream if you don't pet and play with them at a, at a frequency of a metronome. Frogs, frogs couldn't give two shits. They're just gonna sit there and look pretty and that's all, they're golden, baby. Just a little food, maybe an attaboy every once in a while. That's it, that's all I need. Number three, smaller poops, smaller dookies. Frogs don't poop that much, actually. Unlike dogs that force you outside to take a, a cold shit in the middle of the winter, and cats that make a lot of weird guy contact when they take dumps if you're in the room. Frog poop is almost hard to find. It's uh, it's unnoticeable. And they can't even fart. Have you ever smelled a dog fart? It's horrendous. Frogs can't fart because they got weak sphincters. I just learned that fact. And they can go multiple weeks and even months without ever pooping. They, have a, they can go a whole month without pooping. Kind of sounds like his owner. Things have been tough. And when the time comes, they just bunker down, grip it, and rip it. That's a good pun. Number four, frogs are shockingly cheap compared to other pets. In comparison to like dogs and cats, it's night and day. The average cost of having a dog or a cat yearly is two grand minimum. I mean, for Christ's sake, my cat eats better than me, and I don't know why I let her do that. But frogs? Frogs are independent, self-reliant little homies that say, hey man, I know the economy is a little whack right now. I'm just gonna sit back and chill. You work on those, those credit card payments right now. I know you're in the deep with those. 25 bucks a month, and you have fed and sheltered a uh, frog adequately. Unless you have one of those rare 
rare frogs that needs a lot of shit, like it needs to bathe in the blood of bugs or something. Just avoid those until you're ready for that kind of commitment. And number five, they stick around for a long time. A shocking amount of time. Unlike dogs and cats that show up and make you love them unconditionally and then they shit the bed between a decade and a decade and a half, frogs kind of stick around for a long time. A frog can live up to 20 years or more and I had no idea they could go that long. A guy in Australia has a frog named Fred and it lived for 40 years. Now that might be a lie. I don't know Australia man or Fred, but lying about your frog is not gonna get you any prizes. So I'm gonna believe him. So let's go over the facts right now. You have a little buddy that lives forever, doesn't take up that much room, is cheap as shit and is very cute. And all those things come together and you're still not convinced? You're still being an ignorant, dumb looking, fucking ugly asshole? Yeah, that's what you are, unless you agree with me. In which case, I don't wanna hit the same notes over and over again, guys. I don't wanna keep calling you guys dicks and assholes, but you know, if you don't change, it's gonna keep happening. All right, so now that we have seen the best types of frogs and the best reasons why you should have a frog, I, we should do our due diligence and to bring up the fact that some frogs will kill you. They will. I talked about some chill frogs, but the ones I'm about to talk about are are, are comically not so chill. Like, they'll kill, kill you immediately. I started with the good ones so we could ease in. So you had like a good mentality so you can give these next guys a break because the other ones are so cool that maybe these ones are worth, you know, writing off. So let's just quickly run through the list of legal disclaimers so we can go back to loving frogs in a normal and healthy manner. So first up, we have the Karabi frog. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool looking dude, you must, you must admit. This little guy is found in Australia because, of course, if you find a, uh, an animal that looks like it belongs in the digital circus and can kill you, it's gonna be in Australia. So, fun fact, most poisonous frogs secrete poison that comes from the food they eat. So, you know, they'll eat some weird shit and then that makes the poison. Not these little guys. His body produces its own poison, which is rare and honestly admirable. He doesn't have to depend on, like, berries and shit to make poison. He's a self-made man and you gotta respect it. He secretes alkaloids, which I couldn't figure out what that meant exactly because Wikipedia suggests it could do anything from cure cancer to get you insanely high to killing you instantly. So uh, regardless, just stay away from him. Uh, what, two of those things seem cool, but the last one's a big deal. So we would just, just you know, play the game safe. Number two, we have the golden poison dart frog. Look at this little guy. Do not touch him. But look at him, he's kind of cute. So the golden poison dart frog is the most poisonous frog on the earth. Actually, it, some people say it's definitely the most toxic animal, period. Like, uh, overall. I mean, on the surface, this guy's adorable. It's only about an inch long and weighs less than an ounce. Um, and those eyes, I mean, look at those eyes. You want to touch them. But don't touch him because it, it contains enough poison to kill 10 humans. 10 full-grown adults it'll can murder. Why did I just whip? So try and avoid the temptation of giving this little guy a little pet because he's gonna drop you like a Frank Ocean album. Suddenly, silently, and people are gonna wonder what happened to you afterwards. And then we have the Phantasmal Poison Frog, a rather fitting name, wouldn't you say? So once again, touch and instantly die kind of creature we're talking about. And Phantasmal is honestly a great name for this little Hellraiser because the poison it secretes is like a super powerful opiate. Like, you know, like fentanyl. He's a fentanyl frog. So you're just gonna become a sleepy ghost of yourself and then drift off to sleep like a ghost. Um, but you'll be dead. Scientists have actually hypothesized that the poison of this frog could develop a non-addictive painkiller, but we've heard about non-addictive painkillers before, and that did not go so well. So hopefully they avoid this whole thing altogether. Plus, scientists have said it seems that the poison uh, overall is too much for a human to handle, and I understand that because you touch it and die. So that does, I would put that in a bit much category. And last but not least, we have the cane toad. Now the cane toad, if you're not Australian, is just a normal frog. And if you are Australian, your blood pressure just rose a million levels and you grab the nearest weapon towards you because fuck these little guys. They exploded in population in Australia and just like, there were so many of them, literally covering roads. And like while you were driving, you just hear a million pops of these guys exploding under the weight of your car. But they're not just annoying and fuck a lot. They are also poisonous, but in a weird way. Have you ever heard about licking toads? Like in the eighties and nineties, there was a big meme, I guess, that like you'd lick a toad and get high. Well, that's because of these little guys. It's because the cane toad has toxins that uh, act like LSD and DMT at the same time. So it wouldn't be enough to kill you, but it would be enough to make you fly through geometric patterns and find God under a sea of sunlight. So that sounds cool, but people did die. It does kill you if you do too much or if you do it wrong. And plus you're, you're so willing to get high, you're gonna lick something that looks like this. Zoom in on his skin. That's what you wanna put your tongue on? You're a degenerate. Find a better way to get high. And there's a bunch of other poisonous frogs as well, but I just wanted to hit the main key points. If it's really bright, don't touch it. If it's fat, don't lick it. You know, the basic things. So there you have it. Some frogs suck, but the majority of them are just chill little guys that would want nothing more than just to be your loving little companion. So the next time you hear someone talking shit about Officer Hopper and his pal Lolly Hops, just let them know that, you know what? Some frogs are actually really cool and you're being kind of a dick about this. They would never hurt us on purpose, although some of them do it on accident. That's just, it's, it's in their nature and you can't get mad at them for that. New videos every Saturday. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you did it, it would make me very hoppy. No, that's not how I should say that. Nothing would make me hoppier. God. Code BigTug55 at checkoutsemper.com. Check it out.